Hi everybody, uh, welcome to another podcast from Macduff Marine Aquarium. Uh, my name's Chris and I'm the displays officer here at the aquarium and I'm joined today by two of my colleagues. Uh, I'm Theo and I am the aquarium team supervisor. And I am Fraser and I'm the aquarist. Awesome guys. Um, yeah, we're going to have a, a chat for a few minutes or so about 2021 and what we've got to look forward to, uh, what we've got to um, change, alter, do um, in the aquarium in order to get round to opening again. Because obviously here we are on the, I think it's the fifth. No, I'm losing track a little bit of time. The sixth. Uh, it's a sixth. Oh, yeah, I am losing track um of january and we're, we're back in lockdown again so um we've been granted this little bit of time in order to spruce the aquarium up a little bit so i thought we'd have a chat about what what we're going to do so fraser do you want to crack off <laughs> oh uh yeah i can do um yeah so basically as you just said we are now closed it does allow us the chance to do things that we wouldn't be able to do when we're open so at least for the next couple of weeks um myself and you will probably uh, be getting down into the tanks um, and actually giving them proper cleanups. So rather than just um, tidying up the, the glass and the windows like we normally would throughout the weeks, uh, we'll be doing a proper deep cleaning, uh, getting the tanks completely stripped back to bare uh, foundation, rebuilding, plumbing, doing anything that we need to do regarding like uh, concreting and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a several so around the building. So I was going to say that was that's going to involve you uh, draining the tanks out as well in it, which people don't realise. So that'll be yeah. taking all the animals out, putting all the water down, and getting it done that way. Pretty much, yeah. We phys well, I physically, you, if if you've been in the previous winters, you may have seen me on occasional days, literally sat in tanks. Uh, I think there's well, I've I've done that myself. Been photographic evidence of me sitting in <laughs> tanks, literally. Yeah completely covered in in gack where i'm scrubbing yeah. rocks and stuff like that and that's so. a technical term of course well gack oh yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> that, that covers all sorts of things you might find inside a fish tank yeah pretty much it's just a generic overview of what comes out of a fish tank once you clean it down <laughs> <laughs> so what what sort of things phrase are you looking to try and do in order to make the tanks better um, so there are a couple of tanks that have got a bit of um, rock work that needs rebuilding. So obviously um, water has got into the tank uh, in, in behind the rock work and over time it's it's caused it to perish and collapse. So there's a couple that need a little bit of rebuilding in their theming. Um, obviously fish during the winter stop eating as much. So there'll be bits of food that may not have been eaten that have been wedged in nooks and crannies that you don't necessarily get to um, when you do a surface cleanup or a day-to-day -day, uh, cleaning so you physically have to get into the tank to fish it all out so it'd be things like that that we'll be getting down to uh, and just making sure that everything is as neat and tidy as possible uh, and we'll also be putting in new stuff so fresh rocks fresh uh, bits of seaweed maybe fresh ornaments and stuff like that to make the tanks look a little bit different uh, and just to provide a slightly different view for the fish and the customers when they come back in. Cool. Yeah, no, that all sounds really good. Um, yeah, it'd be good to at least get a chance to get the tanks as clean as clean as we can. As I say, we do quite a good job here of keeping the tanks clean on a day-to-day -day basis, but it really does um, allow the, um, the deep cleaning to go on when you haven't got any members of the public around and you can have sand and buckets and water and hoses and all sorts over the floor. Yeah, I Is think it anything? makes us feel a little bit better as well because obviously we see the tanks most days and i think when we do a proper refresh on them like that it really brings them back to life for us oh, absolutely i think also it benefits the animals as well as there's a lot of um we tend to have a, a bit of a problem here with uh, a, a type of pest anemone that seems to get in everywhere and really the only way of getting rid of this type of anemone out of the tank is to to scrub it or to um to mechanically remove it from the rocks um and of course it allows then colonization of an enemies that we do want and the fish to sit on the bottom and things so i think it probably benefits them a lot yeah absolutely have you got anything else coming up in january fraser uh yes um, so it's the annual stock take so it's my job to go around the entire building and count every single fish and blenny and, and crab and anemone uh, that we have in the building and do my best to make sure that every one that we've got on our records is accounted for. So, you counting uh, his enemies, that'll be entertaining. <laughs> that will be. 
Well, I'll be counting the anemones we want. Uh, as for the anemones we don't want, <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but, back uh, back yeah, to so. your counting brittle stars. Oh, yeah, brittle stars. Woohoo. <laughs> Plenty of them. I'd to lose count. count. I'd lose count too early. I'd end up having to start again about 1,400 times. It'd never get done. <laughs> yeah, well, when you, when, when, when... Oh, sorry. That's right. When you hear about stock takes going on in zoos and you think, oh, that must be quite a big job. Uh, it's a bit easier for them that have got two rhinos big and lion. four <laughs> elephants and six yeah. lions. Yeah. When we've got um, 30 or 40 uh, cod in one tank or 20 or 30 safe in another tank or... An they under- sit still. Yeah, that's right. And of course, they don't sit still. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go in, night and, and in there at night and have them all sitting around on the bottom to count. No. So yeah, that's my other job throughout January as well. So deep cleaning and stock take. Yeah. <laughs> Keep you out of trouble. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We're also lucky enough to have a um a bit of investment going into the aquarium in the form of um a lot of our interpretation panels uh coming out and being replaced. Um so we're hoping that's gonna really refresh a lot of the the panels for people to read about the information and hopefully there'll be a little, little bit of interactivity amongst all that um and we're also getting some element of a uh, a litter or plastics display to talk about the the damaging effect of plastics um Theo, is there any any more kind of educational stuff yeah so obviously because we are all well apart from you guys are working at home at the moment we're um um, adding more downloadable content to the website, so in our learning resources, the see and do stuff. Uh, but we're also been putting together some talks. So catch my drift. Um, there are many series of talks coming out, and when the schools go back, we'll be looking to do catch up talks with teachers as well. And during the lockdown that we now are in again, we will be looking at doing Facebook Live events on Thursdays. So at the moment, we have. Uh, about six weeks worth of or five weeks worth of live events um, scheduled coming up and we also have still got the Emily Penn plastics talk on YouTube and we can also do um, catch up uh, talks with teachers after that as well so basically everything that we're doing at the moment is gearing towards the online element um, because obviously without kids being in school and a lot of it being online and blended learning uh, we really want to supplement that so um, obviously schools can can watch the events when they're back in uh, they can watch them at home and then they can talk about that and then we can provide um, you know resources aside from that to help supplement that learning awesome yeah that sounds that sounds really good yeah um, yeah we've we've been really lucky actually with our social media reach that we've been able to to put out and a lot of people seem to be engaging with the social media side of things of course it's not the same as having people on site and we're we're just waiting for the days when we can open up again and of course we'll keep everyone in touch with when that is um but yeah fingers, fingers, fingers crossed we'll see people back here soon hopefully um but i mean the the thing i like about the the facebook live and things like that is that you know we get people from all over the world tuning in to see our you know um fish feeding and talks about the fish that we have here in the Murrayfer to see you guys diving in the tank it's really interesting to see where people are from uh, yeah it's, i think some of the furthest places we've seen are canada and australia so yeah literally that's i've, I've seen some like that it's, yeah our reach is amazing that's fairly impressive for our, our little aquarium in the northeast of Scotland. I know, it makes my heart swell. <laughs> <laughs> but haven't you um, got some new animals coming in aside from uh, all the rocks and seaweed that you'll be putting in, Fraser? Uh, yes, well, we've got uh, a new one already on display. Uh, I've been calling it a she, but I honestly don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. Uh, so uh, we've got a conger eel. Um, so that's actually been in our main tank now since just before Christmas. I'll uh, try and get her dancing tomorrow on film, but I'm not sure that she'll be dancing. <laughs> well, we're try- trying to get her uh, back out of her pipework. She's found a home in the in the pipework in the in the centre of the exhibit. So she's she's well and truly found herself uh, a little place to stay. But uh, you it means you can't say see that it. she's uh, elusive. Oh, oh dear, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, to a quick bit, end, end the podcast now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you could say that. You could indeed. Um, so yeah, so she's in the in the 
in the aquarium on display at the moment. Um, and we've also got some juvenile uh, seahorses. So some of our short snouted seahorses, uh, we managed to get, uh, was I believe it was a donation um, to allow us to buy these guys. So we've got uh, six little seahorses currently in quarantine, just doing their initial quarantine period. Uh, and that allows us to assess their, um, how good they are. Um, FOMA, that was it, sorry. Yeah, I knew it was from somebody. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just allows us to assess how, how they're doing, whether they're feeding um, and make sure that they're fit and ready to go on display. So they're due out actually, I think in a couple of weeks time, if I'm right, Chris. I think it's next week. Yeah. Um, based on this being over the 5th or 6th of January, I still can't remember. Um, I think it's, um, I think it's next week, uh, that they're due out and they're feeding really well now. So, um, Yay. fingers crossed that they'll get on. Okay. With the, the other ones in the tank and we won't have too much competition for food, but we'll keep a close eye on that. And they will definitely be on display for, um, when we reopen. Yeah. Cool. So I was, I'm glad that they're feeding because obviously um, when they start life, they have to go into the quarantine. Um, but one of the things we look for is to make sure that they are feeding and they're being active within quarantine. Um, obviously, all fish have to be quarantined when they come into the aquarium from other sources. Um, and that's to make sure that there's no diseases or infections. Um, but it's also to assess how they're doing as individuals. So if they've got no diseases, we still need to make sure that they're actually fit for purpose um, and fit for being on display so i'm glad that they're now feeding well because i know a couple of weeks back just before christmas i didn't see any of them feeding at all and i was very worried that we wouldn't get them out of quarantine so that's quite a good uh, thing to know for i think i think their forward. um their difficulty was that when they're when they're born uh, the place that bred them for us fed them on live shrimp okay uh, so it takes that little bit of transition period to get them from live shrimps uh, where the shrimps are buzzing around in front of their faces um, onto the frozen stuff that we feed them. Um, obviously, we've only got a limited supply of live food that we can feed to feed to our seahorses. Um, it's difficult for us to get hold of larger mycid shrimps and things. So we have to rely on frozen food, but it takes a little while for the, the animals to adapt to that, that diet. Once they're on it, they're fine, but um, it does take that little bit of time. I do want to point out that we do defrost the food. We're not just like, you know, giving the sea horses <laughs> little yeah, frozen yeah, ice cream. Block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seafood ice cream. Cool. So, yeah, great, guys. That, um, that sounds like a, a really exciting start to the season. As I say, it's not mm. the start to the year, but I think everyone was hoping for. Mm. Um, 2021 is, is starting a bit a bit bleak, but um, we're we're positive it's here positive. and we're we're really looking forward to to the new season and hopefully the, the reintroduction of members of the public back in to come and see our, see our um, animals in our exhibit. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Nice Cheers, guys. Um, no worries. That will, we'll wrap that one up and we'll see you again for another, another podcast at some point soon. Excellent. Yep. Thank you.